Alrighty, hello every folks, and good morning. Welcome to uh, a little bit of a warning. So, uh, Titanium Legman is also doing an Iron Man run of, uh, of Unicorn Overlord, and I wanted to share a little bit of a story here over what happened with uh, with mine recently. Um, over, basically just to give you an idea of how quickly things can turn around in a run like this, uh, regardless of how overpowered it, oh my god, it's so easy, you might be feeling it any given time. See, the thing is, this game is basically built to be played uh, as a as a bit of a nuzlocke run, right? So, for those that uh, that are unfamiliar, currently the rule set sits uh, very similarly on both sides. Uh, I He added a few different things on his end, I added a few different things on my end. Um, like, in his particular case, uh, he had that whole thing about uh, community units. I've mostly been use, uh, just kind of running random units, uh, unless there's somebody in particular that I want to use. Like, for example, if you see a blue archer later, uh, Mr. Dagar, that's you. I apologize for what happens to you. <laughs> um, and additionally, um, uh, on uh, on my end, I have a rule in place that any game over is a game over. Uh, he's doing a retreats are allowed kind of clause. But either way, very similar rule set in terms of if you, essentially, if you lose, you just go and delete your file and you start from scratch. If Elaine dies, you start from scratch, and if uh, any squads are lost, you do not use Cornash to bring him back. Because interestingly enough, this game does actually have basically a permadeath uh, system in there with the option to go bring somebody back, but nobody's forcing you to. And additionally, uh, just counting up those Cornashes could almost be a almost high score system. Um, Anyway, uh, there we go. Dagar, the blue archer in the middle. That's uh, that's your guy. Uh, yes, I tried to make him as close to a Xenonauts archer as I could. Dang it. Uh, any darn ways. So, with that being said, I wanted to share a little bit of a cautionary tale here. Um, because this was uh, this was uh, when I had gotten into Dragonhold here. I'd gone and set up a bunch of things to try and make this run more consistent. I went for squads that had a whole lot of uh, kind of utility abil uh, uh, sorry utility abilities on hand. At a, uh, a a quality squad as a lane squad there to try and keep them as safe as possible. Uh, with uh, with Baron Garia going and backing him up just to give him even more ridiculousness. Uh, for those that have not used her in a squad as of yet, she's basically the Thunder God set of this game, uh, being a combination of a uh, Shaman, uh, Lord, and uh, uh, Viking at the same time, more or less. Uh, any darn ways. So, with that being said, um, I'm, oh, hang on. Uh, if you hear random barking in the background, I apologize. I'm going to try and pause it here real quick to go deal with that. Foster puppies. I'll explain in a moment. Hold on. And we are back to uh, Scarlet and her broken feet. Any darn ways. That joke's been made to death. Let's go ahead and continue on. I mean, frankly, we can we can make that joke about anything. Uh, Aubin over here uh, looks like he's uh, ready to go do some Taekwondo at a moment's notice. This is still Magellan right now. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, Gloucester was later. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, Camilla died somewhere in the sand. I don't know how. Um... But uh, we didn't end up getting our uh, friendly uh, squad over there to go talk them into joining our side, so she just dies. Um, so either way, she just sort of starts attacking whoever at this point, uh, as green units often tend to do. Uh, they end up uh, taking that uh, area over there, and apparently we actually end up losing Valor points if a neutral capital is taken as well, as a nice happy little nod to, uh, to the Ogre Battle Games. <laughs> At least that's how I'm going to choose to read it. Now, I had Lex and the archers over here attempting to, uh, attempting to hold this tower. Unfortunately, they constantly ended up getting hit by more and more units, and it was proving to be a little bit of a problem. I was running out of items to uh, get them back up on their feet, um, and was uh, was regularly uh, just kind of having them uh, get uh, battered around watching that dang tower. So, ultimately had to abandon the tower, and then realized I'd left Aubin squad up there, just kind of sitting around doing nothing for this entire time. Um, also, apologies again for the puppies in the background. Um, anyway, carrying on. Yeah, I, I mentioned earlier that we uh, kind of did some foster puppies. Yeah, they Somebody was a bit of an ass and uh, ended up kind of just leaving several uh, pipples. Um, and um, yeah, long story short, they needed a home. We were set up for puppies, so the puppies. Uh, anyway, so uh, so yeah, most of the time they're going to be sleeping if I'm doing anything like this. But uh, today was an exception where that was not possible. So with that being said, let's uh, let's continue on here. So okay, one undetermined wait later. 
Um, I, I love this little moment. Uh, there's a lot of those little moments like that <laughs> when they're trying to, for example, give a warning to their boss that's dead at this point uh, and they haven't realized yet. Um, there's a lot of little things that uh, that end up changing. Like, I, I've I, I've seen angry comments saying, like, oh, no, 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 this doesn't have nearly as many, like, changes to everything as Ogre Battle 64 does. What kind of heretic decides to go and compare the two? Like, this thing actually does have a lot more changes uh, to random stuff than it gets credit for. Anyway, so we start having a lot of problems with these uh, with these towers at this point, uh, where a lot of times they just ended up getting uh, getting into issues, uh, actually reaching them on time. That's why I ended up using Wild Charge to basically bypass the sand and take out that tower, because as uh, as you've probably noticed if you've uh, played TZ mode before, uh, these uh, these towers have a tendency to blunt offensives like nothing else. They have a tendency to weaken units just enough to the point that they have a problem. Um, and this this includes things like uh, flying squads getting completely blunted before they have a chance to be anything useful. Um, this, uh, this is going to a... You know, already an interesting place to pause here, but let's just take a moment to appreciate that uh, apparently Elaine is very unamused by the fact that uh, Aubin just punched a frickin' supernova out of Magellan's face. Anyway, so let's continue on here. So... Yeah, I, I thought this was Gloucester. This is still uh, this is still Magellan. So he ends up joining after this, as uh, as he does. Uh, Lex doing the uh, the standard uh, my sword is a cane pose that all the fighters do. It's uh, it's amusing. Any darn ways. So with that said, uh, he ends up joining our team, and we end up getting some new members. Uh, a little bit before this, I'd gone and filled out the team with a lot of uh, a lot of different units, um, or rather a lot of empty spaces that uh, that needed filling. Um, and so I figured it was probably about time to uh, to start getting some of those new uh, units in action here. Um, the thing was, you know, with the, with the previous fight going relatively smooth, some of the other fights going relatively smooth, I was kind of getting into a sort of uh, uh, false sense of confidence at this point. And additionally, I'd been waiting on uh, on some order that I was picking up for a very long time. Um, but then they came up with this little warning, uh, where, uh, where they were saying, you know, there's, there was an ambush. Uh, there was an ambush that we were supposed to be fighting here. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a serious one. So it took a bit of a minute to, uh, to try and prepare a little bit. Uh, as always, we gotta do the, uh, gotta do some chicken collecting. Um, those are just mandatory. Uh, if you liberate an area without saving the chickens, have you really liberated anything? I don't think so. It, it's just objectively not the truth. Uh, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta save the chickens. All right. So with that said, this this right here, this was the fight that changed the entire run. So, uh, so one thing that we started noticing immediately um, is that uh, many of these squads were still getting some chip damage through, no matter what. And again, specifically this uh, this momentum cavalry squad. Um, in in most normal playthroughs, this is a very very useful type of unit. Typically, you send them out, they snipe a uh, snipe a settlement, and they get sent back. In TZ mode, however, due to the uh, the very high damage uh, from assists, as well as uh, how quickly fights can potentially turn one way or the other, um, when you lose a unit, uh, or when a unit takes some chip damage, like those ones tend to do, they can be very easily blunted. So, for example, any arrow rain from any tower, like basically any time they're charged up over there, if you get anyone remotely nearby, uh, that flyer unit it has just lost its flyer, which means it lost its evasion wall, which means, you know, you're going to have a bad time. Now, there were a lot of moments like this, uh, where we were getting hunted down in the desert by units that could navigate it a bit better, uh, that we were f uh, forced into situations of accepting awkward losses because I was thinking somebody would get somewhere just on time. This is more so a lesson in terms of uh, do not try to do an Iron Man run when you are half asleep, um, because you'll start making mistakes in your timing. So I went ahead and warped them out of there, that's one of the reasons that that is one of the few archer squads that manage, managed to survive this whole thing. So we get through some of those uh, uh, the Terror Knight squads, or Doom Knight squads, rather, um, and it starts looking like Joseph is going to be the one to start cleaning stuff up. So you'd think. But again, look at the mix of different units. You've got Joseph's squad that's able to, uh, to counter the House Coral squads, but they're also going to end up uh, taking... Uh, I mean, it depends, but they're going to be taking some pretty iffy engagements uh, versus a lot of the uh, the sword fighter as well as uh, other flyer squads, depending on how they decide to send them out. 
Um, additionally, we've got our uh, flying momentum squad that's barely able to put a dent into things. Uh, we've got our infantry squad that is very heavily slowed down by the sand, and additionally, uh, the items end up getting burned through pretty early on, so that we can't really necessarily rely on those as well. But this right here is what ends up happening to that momentum squad pretty regularly, where they'll end up taking one loss that snowballs into a complete loss. So they got taken out trying to defend that particular area right there. Um, thankfully, the AI at that point decided that it had better things to do, and ended up... Oh, no, actually, they did survive that one. Uh, must have, uh... Huh. Actually, I think that might have been where the items got burned. My bad. Anyway, so I had sent the, uh, the Oakley's squad to go deal with the archers. The archers said no. <laughs> and they're over there holding on at, at uh, you know, basically, uh, basically holding on at, like, a third of their health now. So they can't even put a dent in that tower anymore, and this is the kind of thing that you start seeing at this point. Stuff does not work the, work the same way that it did in Cornean. These guys will gladly keep an arrow rain in reserve. Uh, they will gladly uh, send out units specifically just to hunt down other units. Um, and ultimately, it was a huge chunk of this map that Virginia ended up winning by herself due to just technical wins over and over in one particular road in the desert. Um, like, the ways that stuff can go sideways in extremely awkward ways are really, really fun. Um, so this was one of those uh, mistakes that I started making. So we're already about a third of the way through our time here, and I needed to start advancing a bit more. So I decided to start sending in everybody in uh, in the old Death Ball. Uh, so I decided to go uh, send a healer squad, send Virginia forward, since she did pretty well versus the sword fighters, and additionally send a Rolf squad to go back them up. Again, Dagar, I apologize. Um, so... Uh, we see that the Flyers are doing decently enough uh, holding up in that uh, town to the south, so we're just going to go ahead and leave them there for the time being. I need those Arbalesters dealt with uh, sooner rather than later, and at this point, I once again, as always, forget that Arbalesters have the same smoke shot that we do. Um... I still feel like the folks that uh, that were making this must have been fans of Ring of Red, because I have so very, very rarely seen any kind of uh, attachable smoke grenade uh, type of options in a strategy game, and yet... Sure enough, right there, it's almost the exact same thing as uh, the way that they uh, they handle those ones there. Though, I believe they actually, if I, if I recall correctly, they mixed up smoke grenades and white phosphorus somehow. <laughs> so, those do the opposite of what you'd think they do. Um, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, Hector's uh, squad over here, though supposed to be a defensive magic support, uh, does not function very well defensively uh, against these guys whatsoever, so they end up getting completely frickin' steamrolled. Um, uh, we've got the, uh, uh, we've got the, uh, the quality cavalry squad over here, uh, that's constantly managing to keep itself alive, courtesy of Chloe, um, but unfortunately they're also really having issues with these, uh, sword fighters here, just due to the number of attacks they get. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's a, it's a bit of a thing. Uh, <laughs> like, they'll get, they'll get attacks through, but, uh, uh, but ultimately that, uh, that parry that they get ends up being a pretty major turnaround. So, anyway, uh, basically keeping that squad alive became key to actually managing, ach managing to achieve a win here. Because bear in mind, we are now 50% on our time. One of our ace squads is up there, basically unable to move without taking injuries. Another ace squad is at 10% health, give or take, uh, with two of its members still standing and in a, we in, in a rest mode. Uh, we just lost uh, Hector's team, basically, to a back-to-back. -back. For some reason, they got launched backwards, so nobody could get there in time to save them, so that is one squad permanently dead. Um, we've got our uh, our uh, wyverns over here. I have no clue how these guys frickin' survived, because... Um, Currently, this squad right here, uh, with um, uh, with Bruno, a Wyvern, a Cleric, and uh, what, what was that, like a, a Fighter, I think? There was a specific thing I was going for with that team, and they specifically have been one of the most underperforming teams offensively, bar none. Um, they were mostly just there to try to get technical wins, but they were just really bad at it. Um, Somehow they survived this. Now, I don't think I took a clip of this earlier, but this is Dieter. He's supposed to be Dart. I know, I keep making a new Dart in every one of these save files. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's trying his best to look through the pocket of items to try to find something to save their asses. Unfortunately, um... That's not looking too hot right now because of that Arbalester squad. No matter what was shuffling around, they were dead. So, Dagar, bye. Sorry. Um, so yeah, they're gone. 
you know, new uh, cell sword that was looking really promising managed to last a grand total of one fight. Um, so yeah, they get run over. Uh, we've now got uh, we've now got them going after our uh, our HQs and stuff. So that's not great. Um, see that nobody's really realistically trying to catch up with them. I don't know why I tried to send Virginia back here. She's one of the slowest moving units on the team. Um, uh, but ultimately, uh, Renault's team gets sent in uh, to try and hunt down some things because they're also a pretty heavy hitter. You know, he's a great knight. He's he's pretty solid. Uh, he's got uh, two warriors uh, as well as a sword fighter with him. So uh, overall, they're a pretty solid offensive team. Um, usually the uh, the approach that I was going for was kind of weakening them with something else, like whether it was an archer fire or or whatnot else, and just having that team go and run them over. They were mostly there as a can opener against anything that was a heavier armor unit. Uh, ultimately, uh, it ends up being Scarlet's team that ends up uh, taking over that particular role. Uh, we have uh, Joseph's squad limping away from the fight at this point. Uh, we've got Scarlet's team looking for a miracle, <laughs> trying to survive this. Um, uh, where they're uh, they're getting hard countered by the stuff that's running into them pretty solidly here. Uh, they find their technical win here um, just barely, like just, just, just barely, um, and they end up barely managing to limp their way out of the fight. See, they would have been dead, like dead dead, if they hadn't moved off to the side there. Thankfully, the AI is trying to do other things, so they won't really prioritize, for example, hunting down a unit that's hiding off to the side of the road unless you give them a reason to. So, like, if they rest or something, then they would have just been dead. Um, but in this case, we didn't give them a reason to attack, so they just get to sit by the side of the road and use Valor points to try to get themselves back into uh, into play here. Um, unfortunately, these guys ran into, well, their own counter as well. Again, do not play when severely tired. So, uh, so it was looking very clear that uh, the main way I was going to have to go about this was to have Virginia start soloing stuff. She's surprisingly good at soloing stuff. <laughs> she ends up going and holding down that particular road without a heal for a very long time. Because um, I was like, I was certain she was just dead there, and then miracles start happening. Um, so we finally get a wyvern up to that tower. I'd seen. I forget if uh, we'd lost another squad to go take that uh, tower at this point. Um, but as you can see, even even doing the uh, the Miracle Shuffle only does so much. I feel like its uh, its effect is actually a bit less in this mode than it was on Expert, um, since you do notice that uh, stuff feels a bit more set in stone than it was before. Not, not completely. I can't tell exactly what's different, but something's different. Anyway... The quality squad gets sent down south uh, to go deal with uh, to go deal with that town down there to hopefully not only deny reinforcements but also give us a bit more of an opportunity to uh, uh, to move forward here. I needed to uh, to move some of my previous squads up because, as you'll notice by our timer, stuff is starting to get a little tight. Uh, we are down to the last 25% at this point, or actually no, the last third I should say. Um, so stuff is looking very tight. We do have a campfire right there. It's going to help uh, push us forward. Um, and that's why I start uh, sending in uh, damage squads to try and uh, get this uh, get this forward. And this, this is one of those moments that I love summon warriors for. Because there's those moments when you just need a little bit more meat uh, to, uh, to push your actual fighters uh, into, uh, into the gap there, you know? They just need to push a little bit more. You just need that little bit of momentum. And so that's what we end up uh, getting out of the situation here. So Joseph's squad ends up doing their best to heal up over there. We've got uh, Oclise uh, playing goalie, uh, going to uh, to fight the uh, the wyverns out of the sky here. Man, I, the awkwardness of these uh, of these thirty second clips <laughs> cannot be understated. <laughs> like it's weird that it has specific random gaps, you know. Um, like it. it it kind of gives me those vibes of those uh, kind of like old uh, uh, aughts uh, kind of uh, gameplay videos where people legitimately had to go and record entire sessions, like arbitrary time limits at a time. But at that point, you know, audio quality and video quality and everything else was basically VHS. So, eh. either way, this is convenient. It's not the most smooth, but it's convenient. Anyway, so at this point, we're doing one big final push. We've got basically no time left on the clock. We are going for the three-pointer here. So, 
ultimately, I gotta get that uh, the quality squad up there. Uh, we end up losing the uh, the mercenary meat uh, dealing with the sword masters, but they're very good at dealing with those sword masters. Not necessarily in terms of directly winning the fight against them, uh, but they do manage to uh, to very effectively uh, at least damage them enough to the point that a momentum squad can push through. Um, we're leaving uh, a lot of things uh, kind of up in the air here, using uh, smoke bolts to try to shut down these watchtowers so that we're not losing multiple squads uh, to uh, to a frickin' watchtower again. I should point out by this point, I think it was two of the three squads that end up dying uh, that ended up being killed uh, trying to take out that stupid watchtower. Um, that every single time a like another wyvern would pop up, or we had another uh, uh, another uh, issue with uh, support fire, or, or like provoke running out, or uh, smoke running out, it, the uh, the sand was slowing them down tremendously. And this is something that's going to come back to rear its head in Bistorius, I guarantee it. So we get those two uh, two uh, towers smoked. Uh, we get the uh, uh, we get the uh, the quality squ uh, squad moving in, but again, they only have six attacks until they get tired. This will become very relevant in a moment. Um, so they're just looking specifically for fights that they can take more or less for free. Uh, like they can take this one for more or less free. Um, they've got a decent amount of healing, considering both of the frontliners are able to heal themselves with attacks um, and very effectively do so, while also reducing the stats of those units. Again, Baron Garia is kind of fucked powerful. Um, Virginia is still there soloing that same road. Uh, we've got Oakley still trying to play goalie over there with no more reinforcements coming that way. We've got Joseph trying to do something here. I don't even know why I tried to send him backwards because it's not like he's going to do anything over there. Um, or, or no, no, no. He was actually sent backwards in order to go get one point. That's what it was. Because this was coming. So we had Air Rain. That's coming in and that's uh, going and uh, damaging our quality squad. It's throwing Renault's squad into critical. Um... We've got uh, our Wyvern squad over there that's basically getting completely ruined. How the hell did they survive this? I don't even don't even remember. So we've got, uh, again, Aubin squad doing the best that they can, carving through. But they've only got two attacks left. Um, and the thing is, even in an ideal situation, two attacks is not going to be enough to make it happen. Oh, right, it was Summon Warriors that kicked in again. So we almost lost uh, Bruno as well as the, uh, the Wyvern Knight as well as... Uh, uh, as well as a couple others there, but again, summon warriors coming in, uh, absolutely frickin' clutch there to go kill him off at the last second. Um, uh, we've got, uh, Renault's team that, uh, was charging forward. I think I forgot that they were charging forward, but they end up getting killed here, um, because surprise sword masters yet again. Uh, so they end up getting iced, uh, so he's just gone for good. We've got, uh, that tower finally dealt with, and I'm looking back, and it's like, there's not enough time to go fight this fight, as well as also take that other tower. There's nothing left in the tank, in any possible way. We've we've gotten... Our items were gone a long time ago. Uh, we've got Joseph hunting down stragglers to uh, to build up points. We've got arrow rains coming in constantly uh, to, uh, to keep battering down the one squad that has a chance to actually score this thing. We've got, like, three seconds left on the damn clock. <laughs> um... And so it goes on and on and on and on and on. We've got uh, the, the rest of our support team just scattered to the wind here. The only one left there is, uh, what's her face, uh, Liza. Um, basically uh, looking for that one last minute win here. Um, so I decided to go for the tower. I see two attacks left in, in the tank for her. Um, I see one attack left for them, and I figured there's like one shot. There's one freaking shot to make this happen. So Joseph gets sent in to go deal with the reinforcements here so that they stop coming in. There's not much time left on the clock, but still he can at least get some points. He can take this town, he can he can go and uh, do a little bit of developing here. He can get us the points that we need to make this happen. They can't take a technical loss here or this fight is done. Um so uh so finally we find uh we find that one technical win right here. Uh, with just barely enough left. They have one fighter left. Uh, we've got basically just Joseph left. Um, he can't he can't finish those guys off, but uh, he can uh, he can hopefully just uh, just sit there. So at least the reinforcements were denied. We uh, bail on the attack on the tower. Use it, or no, I didn't end up using. Did I end up using the range assist? Oh yeah, because the uh, the other points are free. So then she decides to to go march on forward. And go for the swap. Goes in an angle because there's just enough space to allow a swap to happen. Um, and then finally with like, again, literally one or two seconds left on the clock, uh, they end up finally scoring the kill here. It was that damn close. <laughs> 
but again, how quickly stuff can turn around over the course of one watchtower. Man, um, I love Iron Man running this game. Like, yes, my teams are not hyper-optimized. I haven't been sweating over a dang spreadsheet all day. But this is the kind of stuff that I love doing challenge runs for. It was that close. Um, so yeah, absolutely love that. I uh, decided to just take a moment to just appreciate some cutscenes. And that, again, is just one of those things that I love about a solid challenge run here. Because when a, when a rule set is good, it makes you stop and appreciate things for a while. Um, like, it, it's those moments where, like, it, where you legitimately just want to stop and read stuff for a while because stuff got really, really rough. So we took a lot of casualties there. We've got a lot of, uh, a lot of empty room on the roster at this point. Uh, actually, wait. It was more than I thought, actually. So it was actually 20 total units that, uh, that died here. Um, so... That's a bit of a thing. In that case, it'll end up... Yeah, it, it, it will end up being uh, uh, 20 uh, in total. Uh, there's uh, 16 that died over the course of the fight, and then we have another four that are going to indirectly die later due to something really stupid. Um, anyway, so yeah, insert your scene of, uh, of Joker at the end of Mass Effect 2, of like, yeah, the ship's looking a lot emptier these days. <laughs> Um, so I started looking around, like, yeah, we don't really have a whole lot of bench warmers, and there's a lot of red on that board, so, uh, so it's about time to, uh, start building up something new. Now, I do end up changing where Eliza ends up going, but for now, I'm just throwing a bunch of units into teams, uh, that, uh, th this was the time for the rebuild to happen, um, because there was actually a scene later that took me a little bit by surprise. See, the first time through, when I was going through Drakenhold, there was a lot of stuff that I missed, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and see if I can skip forward to that scene real quick. Um, obviously we went to the Coliseum, it's gonna be awesome. Um, what the hell was that? Okay, we skipped straight over that scene. So, uh, yeah, this took me a little bit by, uh, here, let's skip here. Um, so as far as Scarlet goes, I mentioned earlier that I didn't really use her in the team much, and mostly skipped over her scenes, because I thought she was kind of annoying. And then suddenly, uh, it turns out Liza's over here going and, you know, pawning off trinkets and whatever else, and then the two start flirting. I'm like, well, you know what? I n this is one twist that I never saw coming, and <laughs> definitely puts an interesting spin on stuff. Also, another bit of an interesting note here on the uh, effects in the background. It's cool how they got the uh, kind of painted people in the background, and there's just, like, the one guy about to pass out drunk uh, next to uh, Big Lady's butt right now. <laughs> It's just, it's just interesting that they actually animated all those dudes in the background. But yeah, no, these uh, these three over here are just suddenly discovering stuff. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, so we require... Er, not require, we acquire some new mercenaries. Uh, we got, uh, uh, we got a, a new uh, sword fighter, we got a new hunter, uh, we got... Uh, at this point, I'm just literally hiring random uh, units as they come up, just to kind of see what'll pop out of this. I really like using random units. Again, minimize to your, to your heart's content. I really like just using random units. As so I end up uh, more or less uh, uh, kind of maxing out this particular fortress, uh, but this is just to give you an idea of, like, one squad wipe can see you clearing out potentially three, maybe four fortresses, depending on who you lost, who you're looking to replace. Like, this entire fortress had only three people in it. Uh, it's not even an entire squad's worth of casualties. So... When you take those big cities, that's when you get, like, a dozen or so units, but uh, for everywhere else, uh, these little forts don't necessarily have that many recruits. Um, so the uh, the Nuzlocke rules kind of enforce themselves in this particular case, and that's, that's pretty neat. Um, anyway, so, uh, you know, the rebuild commenced. Uh, we went uh, back to this particular area and immediately started losing people again. Uh, here, let me see. I think this was the moment. Um, I'm trying to show right here uh, that uh, the AI actually does uh, does adapt to stuff in True Um So, for example, if you fire a, uh, a catapult uh, in TZ mode, they actually will dodge it. In even an expert, they won't. In TZ, they will uh, filter their way around it. And seeing this on this particular map is part of the reason that I decided to put a little bit of extra effort to prepare for the Colosseum fight. Um, because normally, when you're an expert or something, when you go and launch uh, a uh, catapult, 
they would just sit there and take it, or they would run into it, they just wouldn't see where it was coming. In this case, they're basically playing AoE2 online, but they will see that uh, that stuff's coming their way. Um, and in this case, uh, what I was setting up was a case where I would have um, essentially one unit that's uh, that's tired out and resting uh, that uh, would kind of draw aggro for all of those units, put them into a circle, and let the uh, the stones kind of stomp them all in one go. Which, by the way, great, uh, great experience from that. Um, I'm not saying that that's something you need to do all the time, but it is a useful little trick uh, to make sure that that can happen. Uh, it's a very useful trait of high evasion units. Um, here, is it going to be this time that I show it? I, I know one of those times uh, they were effectively dodging it. Uh, maybe it was later? I think this is when it'll be, so let's go ahead and watch all those house carls there, and as you can see, they're going out of their way to try and avoid the, uh, the circle. Uh, as soon as they're going to go nearby the circle, uh, they will try to circle their way out of it. Um, so it's it's just interesting to see that. Uh, Alright, so continuing on here, uh, ultimately this this uh, went on for quite some time, and you know that uh, team with the thief that I just built? Yeah, they're going to die pretty soon. <laughs> I was at this for a decently long time. Um, and, uh, ultimately, uh, they did end up, uh, getting killed off, unfortunately. Apparently, I didn't save the clip. However, there were, there was enough, uh, honors left over to do some promotions, and so, obviously, then we went down that whole promotion road. Um, but, yeah, the team rebuilds are surprisingly quick. Uh, they surprisingly enforce themselves in terms of not being stuck in a situation where you're constantly rebuilding. Um, you know, just kind of starting from scratch as you were. You do have a very limited amount of units. Um, and I know somebody's gonna argue that it's like, oh, it's not very limited, I'm only gonna lose two people, I'm just so amazing, and you will eventually lose people to support fire or something. This is only Drakenhold right now, um, and this is, uh, especially, uh, Albion loves the ambushes, uh, uh, Pistorius loves the ambushes, you get tons of siege weapons, uh, over there in Elheim and all that, uh, there's a ton more <laughs> to play around with, um, like, this is, this is still baby stuff at this point in the game, so... If there's already 20 casualties by this point, I'm, you know, even if you're hyper-optimizing, eventually, if you are following the rule set, I guarantee you, you will eventually get caught off guard by something like that. That eventually you will miss something. <laughs> anyway, so, that was just my little cautionary tale of how you can lose 20 units over the course of a single fight. Uh, so, y'all have yourselves a good one. I know this was probably another one that was kind of hard to follow. And, um, alright. I'll see you next time. God, well, not even by it. This music. My God, the music is so good. Like, I've been listening to this and the 16-bit version of this on my driving playlist dang near constantly. Oh, it's so good. Like, everything about the uh, the Drakenhold music is just freaking amazing. Um, oh, by the way, also, uh, niche uh, use case that you don't see that often. Using summon warriors to batter down barricades. It's just fun. Is it objectively, uh, you know, more expensive, or just a slower thing than using Wild Swing? Sure, but I don't have to use warriors then. So that's nice. <laughs> Personally, I don't really view uh, uh, warrior units that highly. Um, okay, anyway. So, that'll be about that. Y'all have yourselves a good one, and hopefully next time will be a, su a success story of the Coliseum, and or the story of how we got completely demolished because they dodged all the catapult shots. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, y'all take care, and remember to go check out uh, Titani uh, Titanium Legman's uh, stream later today. That should be a lot of fun. Okay, take care.